to the locker room. Welcome to the locker room. What they say? Welcome to the locker room, where it's a safe space for voices to be heard and for ears to be nourished. And 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 yeah yeah, this is the locker room. Welcome to the locker room. Y'all better stop playing with me on these vocals for real. I'll be doing a thing for real. Anyway, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Locker Room, where safe space for voice to be heard, ears to be nourished, all that stuff. I'm going on a little tangent of episodes here. So, like I said last week, we're probably going to release every Friday from here on out just to kind of keep some type of consistency. But I'm going on a little tangent of episodes because I have a lot of things on my mind, on my heart that I want to talk about, that I want to get out. And, uh, you know, I like doing the sports stuff. That's the re- whole reason why I started this channel. But I do have just some things that I want to get off my chest um, that I do want to talk to people about. But sometimes it's not always a conversation. Like, you don't always want to go up to somebody and start a conversation like, hey, have you ever thought about this? It's, it's kind of awkward sometimes. So what better use to talk about it than on a podcast because you don't have to talk to anybody you just talk to the camera and then whoever wants to listen to it listen to it cool it might reach somebody but anyway on today's episode the topic is about being our own gods and how we cannot be our own gods and um you know i talk to a lot of people and if i ask them like who who is god or do you believe in god or is there a god and they're like, God's in God's in us. And every time they say that, I'm like, what do you mean by that? And they're like, well, we essentially that they make their own decisions. So they're their own gods. And typically I ask them in very black and white. I said, so are you saying you can be your own God? That's usually how I've turned the question just so I'm making sure I'm not assuming anything. And typically they say, yes, that we're, we are our own gods. Okay. It's a very common thought, very common thought, but I am on here to tell you why that shouldn't be the way you look at it and why we objectively cannot be our own gods. I already got some people ready to click off of this, but I promise you, if you stick around, it all makes sense. Okay. So let's get right into it. So if you ever had a conversation with somebody and like I just said, they said, you know, yeah, God is inside of us. We can be our own gods. We we are our own gods. We make our own decisions and this and that. So my mind goes all over the place when I have that conversation. And I try to have conversations like that gently because a lot of times for a lot of people, those are very sensitive topics. So I try to tread lightly. I try to go in grace, uh, try to go in this in a way that they don't feel like I'm judging them or belittling them because that's absolutely not the way to talk to anybody. So I'm trying to make sure that I don't do that because I wouldn't want anybody doing that to me. Okay. But I think there is a objective standard of why we can't think that way or why we shouldn't think that way. So I don't even know where I want to start really. I should have made like a, like a list or something like that, but I think I will start here. There's a moral code or a moral compass that we, most of us have, you know, well, really we all have, (laughs) uh, we all have morals. Where do those morals stem from? So if I was to ask you the question, do you think, um, killing, do you think killing or do you think murder is wrong? You might say yes. Do you think that, um, cheating on your spouse is wrong? you might say yes. Do you think that stealing is wrong? You might, you might say yes. Do you think that, um, you know, do you think that, uh, you know, being, being greedy is wrong? Do you like being greedy over somebody else's stuff? Like somebody has something and you're like, Oh, I really want that. I really want that. You know, you, you might say that's wrong. And so those are just four examples. And if you said those, if you agree with me saying those things are wrong, 
Those just happen to be four of the Ten Commandments. So when we talk about our moral code, if we all agree those are wrong, it's, and then you might say, well, those are just wrong. Like, who cares? They're the Ten Commandments. Like, they're just wrong. But when you look back at it, we were all made in the image of God, right? So we were all made to de desire what he desired, to live like him, to be with him. But that fell away in Genesis 3 when Adam and Eve sinned. Sin came into the world. Now we are all born into a fallen world. We're all born into sin. So even though we are still born in the image of God, we're born into a fallen world. So therefore, uh, a lot of our outlooks may not be Christ-like, right? So when we talk about being made in the image of God, God knows only good. He knows no evil. So you ask the question, well, if he knows no evil, why is there so much evil in the world? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. And I was, I was getting there, but we can go there now. There's so much evil in the world because people believe they can be their own gods and that they can do their own thing and that nobody can tell them anything. They, they answer to themselves and whatever. Right. So say, say I believed that I could be my own God. I, I made my, I had my own morals. I, I made my own, uh, decisions. I had my own outlook on life. If I walked up to you and said, Hey, I'm going to kill your family. And you'd be like, what? Like that, that's wrong. You, you can't kill my family. Like, don't, don't do that. And it's like, well, okay, I won't kill your family. I'll kill this family. It's like, no, you still can't do that. Like, you can't just go around killing families. If I had the outlook or if everybody understood what they were saying by saying like, oh, we're our own gods. If I'm my own God, I make my own rules. I have my own judgments. I have my own morals. So morally, if I'm my own God and I say that's right, if I say killing this family is right or killing you is right, who are you to tell me I'm wrong? Because I'm my own God. So if you're your own God and I'm my own God, what I do is right and what you do is right in your eyes and what I do is right in my eyes. So who are we to tell each other we're wrong unless we're judging wrong and right off of an, an objective moral compass? So where does that moral compass come from? Like I said, we're all made in the image of God. So we are born with a moral compass of knowing right and wrong. Now, there are people who just just want to do wrong just because of you know different things they just want to be rebellious or to listen to the wrong people or they're uh you know they sell their soul to the devil as as dramatic as that sounds that's a thing people do and so they do these wrong things these evil things whether it be murder whether it be um assault whether it be uh, robbery, like all these things that they do, but in their, in their mind, they have a reason of thinking it's right. Oh, I killed because I was mad. I robbed because I was, I was wanting more, um, you know, or you're poor, even if you're poor, Robin, it doesn't make Robin right. Or, um, I, I cheated on my wife or cheated on my husband because I wanted to. Now, if you're in a relationship, right, where your spouse thinks they're their own God or God lives in them, they're their own God, and you think you're your own God, and they go and cheat on you, you can't be mad because morally they don't think that's wrong. They don't think that's wrong. So you're upset because they did something that you didn't agree with, but if that's how they believe how they should live and that's morally right, you can't really tell them they're wrong. Because they're their own God. They make their own rules. And they make their own moral standard. Make their own moral compass. So that to say, when somebody says, hey, I'm I'm my own God, or you know, we we are all our own gods, that is a prime example as to why the world looks the way it is now. That's a prime way why people are think that they're they're better than others. That's a prime way that why people think that they can rob and kill people and all this other stuff and do all these evil things. Now, if we got back to the root 
as, as to what what we were originally made for, why we were originally made, why the world was originally created, and we were all chasing after one moral compass, and we were all chasing after not creation but the creator, then I think this world would be a different story. There's a lot of people who will say, yeah, I worship the earth. I need to connect with nature. Uh, God is in nature. God is in the grass. God is in the trees and God is in wind. So I'm going to worship the grass and the trees and the wind. And it's like, why are we worshiping creation instead of the creator? Like if you got a cool new product, right? And you're marveling over this product and you know, you're, grandpa doo made it you're gonna be like oh yeah this is a cool product my grandpa doo made it and you're gonna tell everybody about your grandpa doo and how he made this thing and you're gonna praise grandpa doo for all he did so you're not gonna praise the product you're not gonna praise the creation you're gonna praise the creator you're gonna praise your grandpa doo but it's not the same when we talk about god creating the earth and god creating all things and the, uh, the purpose of God creating all things. And when we see that, then we, we, we praise creation and we worship creation instead of the creator. You know, wh why is that? It could be because we have, we haven't physically seen God, but he's always been around. He, he's a creator of everything. And a lot of people will not believe in something or not have faith in something unless they can tangibly see it or unless they can tangibly feel it right but it's crazy because i've asked people before i say you know who was the who was the first president and they say well george washington that was the first president right <laughs> george i think so yeah um so like you know who, who was the first president they say george washington i would say okay cool like how do you know and they're like what do you what do you mean how do I know? I'm like, how do you know? Like, how did you know he was the first president? And they're like, well, we studied it in history. Okay, cool. So, um, when you talk about the Bible, if we're, if we're, if we're believing books in history, why are we not believing the Bible? Like, what's the difference? And they're like, oh, the Bible is just a book somebody wrote a long time ago. So it was a history book. <laughs> so who's to say, like who's to say one's true and one's not like what what is the argument of saying one's true and one's not what's the logical argument of saying one true and one not i it, honestly i believe that a lot of people just don't want to accept that they don't want to accept the things of the bible because they want to be their own god and because they want to be their own god they have they're reading about the god of this world the uh the, the creator of this world and how he planned for us to live and how he called for us to live. And they don't want to live that way. So then they say, you know, there, there's no God because they want to do their own thing. I think that's the sole reason. Because if we're talking about, oh, I believe what I read in the history book, but I'm not going to believe what I read in the Bible. And it's like, well, the they're, they're both history books in a way. Like we're, we're reading about you know, God and his life and, you know, Jesus, how he came down, lived a perfect life and died on a cross for our sins and all that stuff. So why is that not taken at full credibility? But when you read a history book saying George Washington was the first president, we've never seen him. We've never seen him. But um, we, we're going to take that at full fold. And we, we were going to take it to the grave with us. George Washington was the first president. It's interesting when you think about it, right? And then you talk about, well, nobody, nobody seen, nobody seen Jesus back in the day. They just wrote a book. There was 50 or five, no, 500. I can't remember the exact number. I'm blanking right now. There was 50 to 500 witnesses that saw him after he was dead be, uh, when he walked out the tomb and ascended into heaven, there was 50 or 500, I can't remember that number, 50 or 500 people that saw that. So if, if there's witnesses that saw George Washington as president and there's witnesses that saw Jesus, 
why are we only taking one? What like why? Wh- where's the disconnect? It's interesting. It's something to think about. So I I encourage the people who believe that they can be their own gods in love. You know I I, I you know make all these podcasts in love. I encourage you to seek the creator instead of the creation. And I, I encourage you to seek why it is not a good idea to tell yourself and tell other people that you can be your own gods because we are imperfect humans that are going to mess up. And if we continue to try and find things within ourselves and search ourselves and all that stuff, we're never going to find happiness. We're never going to be whole. We're never going to have that void filled because we're always going to be missing something. It doesn't matter if you have all the money, all the cars, all the women, nothing. You're you're still going to be missing something because there is a way that we were called to live. There was a, a, a way that we were supposed to communicate with the creator. And he gave us that way to communicate with him when he sent Jesus to die for our sins. So we could be reunited with him in heaven. So we could have a relationship with him. So I, a lot of people are also going to say, oh, well, uh, you know, Christianity is just religion and it's just a set of rules and stuff like that. Honest, honestly, it's not. It's a it's a relationship. It's very relational. Like he, he wants, Jesus said he wants to have a relationship with us. He wants us to to talk to him, to build a relationship with him because he has plans for our life. A lot of people are going to say, well, I don't know the reason I'm living. I don't know the reason for life. Yada, yada. There's a reason for your life. There's a reason you're alive. There's a reason you are where you are. But if you don't seek your purpose from the creator, from the person who knew you before you were even in your mother's womb, if we don't seek the purpose from him, yes, our life is always going to seem empty and purposeless. So I encourage you to even if you never talked to God before, just sit down and talk to him and just say, hey, I don't know my purpose, but this guy on YouTube is telling me that I have a purpose and I don't know what it is and I don't believe I have one, but tell me. And he will. He'll guide you. to Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, right, for, for, for good and not for evil and to prosper. If everybody searched the creator if everybody went to the creator and followed the plan that he had for your life we'd all be in a better place me included me included so i encourage everybody to do that i encourage you to seek the creator instead of creation because creation ain't gonna talk to you grass ain't gonna talk to you trees ain't gonna talk to you wind ain't gonna talk to you ancestors ain't gonna talk to you a lot of people believe that, but that ain't that ain't that ain't what it is. <laughs> okay, answer is not gonna talk to you. Nobody, nobody's gonna talk to you. But you go to you go to God, you go to Jesus, he's gonna talk back to you. In a in a small, still voice, he will talk to you and he will make your plans known. He will put you in places that may not always be the most comfortable, but it's where you're the most needed. And it'll be it just it's just a a, a great way to live talking from experience like just being in a place where you know that somebody has your back you can be a person with no friends no family but with jesus he he's got your back you plus jesus is everything and that's that's it's really all you need it's, it's great to do life with people as well don't get me wrong like we are called to do life with people but when you have nothing, when you get to the place where you have nothing, when you hit rock bottom and you have Jesus, then you have everything. So I encourage you to put your pride to the side and realize that if everybody really tried to be their own God and everybody believed that they could be their own God, this that's why we we are where that's why we are where we are now but if everybody went to the creator instead of creation 
then we wouldn't have all this evil in the world. We wouldn't. Like, we would, we were never supposed to have evil. We were no, never supposed to have sickness. Like, we were never supposed to have any of that. Now, it's not our, it's not solely our fault. I mean, Adam and Eve sinned, and they brought sin into the world. And so, really, it stemmed from them. But we are heirs of them, which makes us imperfect. But that's why Jesus came down and died for our sins, so that we could be made perfect again. Because without him, we are imperfect. So, um, yeah, I kind of went on this soapbox, but in a nutshell, search for the creator. And, um, yeah, I think this, that's, that's a really good way to go. Okay. So I think that's it. I think that's all I had to say. But, um, yeah, we have a moral code. We have a moral code that comes from somewhere because you're all made in the, in the image of God, whether you believe it or not. And we're all going to return to dust. From dust we were made, from dust we will return. And we we have a place that he wants us to go. God created heaven for us to go there. God did, God did not create hell for us to go. He created hell for one person. And that was the devil. He devil's the only person that's supposed to be in hell. But we we send we don't God doesn't send people to hell. We send ourselves to hell by 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 just evil, evil, not unbelief, all that. But you know, I don't know. This is probably gonna be a two. I'm just rambling now. But this could probably be like a three part thing. I could be here forever. But uh, I'm going to stop rambling now, but this has been another episode of the locker room and safe space for ears to be heard and ears to be nursed. And, um, I'm Cameron Yoho. So with that being said, um, yeah, I'm going to holler at y'all next time. It's been real. Peace.